One of the first things I tried when I finally got my hands onto Mario Maker 2 was to build an impossible level. A level that is simply absolutely no way to ever beat it impossible. So it pains me to say this, but at least for now, we don't know about a way to create such a stage in Mario Maker 2. However, while exploring the depths of the internet, looking for a way to build a totally, absolutely no way to ever beat it impossible level, I stumbled over many different tricks that at least allow us to build stages that are seemingly impossible. Levels that use minor glitches, weird tricks or obscure mechanics to create a level that appears to be impossible, even though there is a trick that allows the stage to be cleared. So today we're going to take a look at those strange tricks, since many of them are actually quite interesting. So you ready? Let's do this! Okay, so here Luigi finds himself in the middle of the newly discovered desert. There really isn't a lot going on in this room. To Luigi's right is the exit door, but this door appears to be completely unreachable, since it is below a one-way door. To his left is a strange, small contraption, and other than that, there is only a single buzzy beetle, lonely, doing its duty by waddling around. Hmm. So how is Luigi supposed to reach the famous exit door here? Well, the answer is actually surprisingly simple. All that he has to do here is to make use of a recently discovered clipping glitch. First he has to jump onto the lonely beetle and afterwards he has to carry it to this spot. And then, then he is able to trigger the contraption by doing absolutely nothing. Classic Luigi. So after a while, the beetle decides that he has been carried around for long enough and wants to waddle again. The interesting thing here is that the beetle decides to waddle inside the blaster this time. Once it glitched into the contraption, it triggers this note block, which in consequence spits out a delicious mushroom in disgust. All that Luigi has to do now is to run to the right, to start to climb the vines and to wait until the mushroom reaches him. Because as soon as our climbing plumber devours this little snack, he not only grows bigger, but also clips through the one-way door. Hooray! That's the first seemingly impossible room beaten. Alright, so next up Luigi finds himself in the middle of this mysterious ghost house. So the seemingly impossible to reach exit door is this time hidden behind an ouching spike wall. The only way to reach it is this tiny little gap. There is only a small catch. Luigi can't jump through this gap, because as soon as he jumps he gets grabbed by claw which inevitably leads to a tragic spike touching accident. So the obviously only way to leave the seemingly impossible room again is to eat the delicious mushroom, so that our plumber can damage boost through the spiked gap. And would you believe it, after a bit of exploring Luigi actually finds such a mushroom hidden at the top of the stage. But how is he supposed to reach it? The claw doesn't give him enough momentum to jump that far, and a wall jump won't allow him to grab the delicious power up either. Hmm, that's tricky. No matter how hard Luigi tries, he isn't able to reach it. And that is for a very simple reason. It simply isn't possible. This power-up is just an evil trick that the local ghosts are playing on Luigi. Because in truth, he doesn't need a power-up to make it past the claw. In truth, he has to do something entirely different. So check this out. Here we start the room again. This time Luigi immediately jumps into the claw that drops into this bottomless pit. But how is this supposed to help our seemingly trapped plumber? Well, there is a small glitch. If Luigi gets carried to the bottom of the stage while grabbed by a claw and then jumps a couple of frames before he would actually die, then our plumber is allowed to leave the bottomless pit again. But our game gets a bit confused. Claws now don't grab our plumber anymore. Yep, this allows Luigi just to jump past the seemingly impossible gap and to reach the exit door this way. Hooray! So next we have this completely empty room and Toad trapped in the middle of it. The only way to escape this room is by getting a key. The key lives inside this note block in the top left corner of the screen. So, um, there is no way Toad is ever able to reach this note block and there is absolutely nothing else going on in this room. How is our wonderful mushroom hero super to leave the room again? Well, the answer to this little riddle is actually surprisingly simple. There are five block blocks hidden at the bottom. Those block blocks are no ordinary block blocks, but they are actually part of a gigantic hidden combination lock that works by player position. So what Toad has to do if he wants to escape this room is the following. First, he has to stand on top of this block for a second. Then he has to go to the left and to stand there for a moment. Then he has to go to this block to this block, back to the first block and finally he has to stand on top of the block to the far left. If everything worked out, then the key should appear after a moment. Hooray! If Toad were to ever stand on a wrong block, then a combination lock at the top would become locked and obtaining the key impossible. So how did we create a position dependent combination lock? Well the answer is actually surprisingly 
evil poisonous and chasing us during nighttime. Because the answer is with the help of the poisonous killer mushroom that appears in the ground theme during nighttime. So this item is incredibly interesting because it is the only item in the game that pretty accurately mimics Toad's movement. If Toad moves to the left, then the mushroom moves to the left. If Toad stands still, then the mushroom takes a break. All that we did here was to build a small setup like this, hidden out of sight. So the mushroom mirrors Toad's movement. Whenever Toad is standing on the correct block block, then the mushroom is pushed upwards to the next layer. If Toad stands on top of a wrong block block, however, then the poor evil mushroom gets caught by one of those on-off crushers and, well, crushed, which locks the entire contraption. Hooray! Next, it's time for Todette. So here Todette is trapped in a strange room in the middle of a jungle. To her left is the exit door, but this door is unreachable because of those red dotted line blocks. So if Todette wants to reach the door, she has to find a way to trigger this two-step block. Sadly, this two-step block lives behind stubborn one-way doors that refuse everyone who passes them to ever go back again. At the top, we have a clown car below a semi-solid platform, which is obviously unreachable as well. Hmm, so that is a really tricky setup. A lesser mushroom would probably be entrapped here until the stressful timer runs out. But definitely not Todette, because Todette has been lurking around in Psycho's Discord server as a preparation for the Mario Maker 2 job. And there she read something really cool that Coco for Wii Maker posted a while ago. As it turns out, it is possible to ground pound through semi solid platforms if a seesaw is on top of them, like here. Awesome. Now she only needs to find a way to trigger the on off block. But this is no problem for a prepared Lady Mushroom Eider, since she's been binge watching all of Black 60 Dragon's YouTube videos in preparation for Mario Maker 2. And there she learned about a little one way tricking trick. If we fly with a clown car through a one way door and then park our clown faced vehicle there, then we're able to flip the two step block to enter the clown car again and are still able to fly back. Hooray! Let's find out what Toad is currently up to. Hmm. So Toad is once again trapped in a room that is seemingly impossible to leave. I, I start to see a pattern here. Anyway, so this time the problem is once again that the exit door is blocked by red dotted line blocks. But this time the door opening on off block is directly to Toad's right. Sadly for a mushroom hero, this on off block not only opens up the exit, but also transforms the floor into shiny yet deadly coins. So Toad has to trigger this block, but triggering this block kills him. So what is the solution to this little riddle? Well, we haven't talked about the spring so far, because this spring is Toad's ticket to freedom. All the Toad has to do here is to throw the spring upwards, to wait until it reaches its highest point. And while the spring is high up in the air, he has to trigger the on-off block, because then the on-off block doesn't destroy the floor and Toad is able to leave. So I'm sure lots of you wonderful ladies and gentlemen already have a solid theory on how this works. And yup, we just made use of the recently discovered shell direction manipulation trick here. This little contraption is hidden out of sight as soon as a two-state block gets flipped. This shell drops down and either travels to the right or to the left. If the shell travels right, it triggers a P-switch and destroys the floor. If it travels to the left, then nothing happens. The reason why the shell only travels left if we threw the spring upwards before is because shells change their direction for really weird reasons if a spring, P-switch or power block is above them. Great job Toad for figuring all of this out on your own. Um, also Toad, since we're already chatting, do you know by any chance what Mari is currently up to? I, I haven't seen him in a while, you know? Oh, that's lovely. Yeah, I mean, I totally agree with you. The poor guy definitely needed a break. He really wasn't on top of his game lately. I've heard Isle Delfino is a really cool place. The local theme park is awesome. Also, don't worry about the toadstool thing. I'm sure they thought this through. Help! Help me! Um, sure, Toad. Why not? Anyway, so our next seemingly impossible room makes use of Toadette's famous point of calculation. So here, big Toadette is trapped in this room with two bumpers, a locked door, Yoshi and red dotted line blocks. The key is inside this hidden brick block at the top of the bumper. So a less capable mushroom would probably see this brick block, come to the conclusion that it is impossible to reach it and give up. But not Toadette, because it is actually possible to trigger this brick block here. The trick is the following. If Toadette jumps towards it, she isn't able to reach it. If she jumps together with Yoshi, it's also impossible. Neither works jumping off of Yoshi's back. However, if Toadette mounts Yoshi and then both of them crouch, jump while crouched and Toadette jumps off of Yoshi's back the second she hits the bumper, then she clips into the bumper far enough to actually hit the block. 
Hooray! Now all she has to do is to repeat the same procedure on the other side. There is a hidden anti-jump form hidden out of sight that only triggers if Todette does a crouch jump off of Yoshi's back at the exact right moment. This finally allows Todette to leave this seemingly impossible room. Hooray! Alright, so here we have it. Five different designs for seemingly impossible levels in Mario Maker 2. Huge and enormous thanks to all the people that found and collected those wonderful weird little mechanics and glitches. Honestly, huge thanks. You can find the places where I first learned about those tricks in the description. So I hope you enjoyed this little video. If you did, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up and maybe you feel especially confused today since the title of the video is five impossible levels even though we just took a look at six designs and one to the subscribe button as well. I hope that all of you have a wonderful day and to see you soon. Goodbye!